All right, last big cliffhanger of this set of videos. So I'm getting this error, and I think it has to do with the thing that I'm wanting to show you anyway. So where I was trying to go with this is, I don't know if your processor is doing the same thing mine is right now, but the fan is, you know, <laughs> spinning like crazy. The computer's heating up. And if we go look at our .NET side, it's just pulling over and over and over and over again. And so because we're constantly checking the state of the website, then it's just making this call over and over again, this fetch food data. It's doing it over and over and over again, going and grabbing that data, even though the data is exactly the same, right? And so we want to, to temper this. And uh, so what we do is we do this thing called use effect. So just like we use state, we're gonna use an effect. And the syntax is we do an empty function, um, opening brace, and then all of this code is going to go inside my use effect. So I take and put this inside the use effect, and then I need to have, uh, let's see here, I need to have some additional stuff. So what brace goes with what? So we say set food data t um, equal to that. We have a brace here, so yeah, okay, so then semicolon. Um, and then we need to, to call our fetch food data is gonna go inside this as well. So it'll look like that. So that goes with the const. Then we fetch our food data. So this code is all going inside the fetch food. And then, We put that brace on, which will connect with the use effect perfect, and then we say comma, and if we don't find anything, let's just pass in an empty array. All right, now I've got an extra parenthesis. Okay, so this should line up. Let me save it, it'll put everything in the right spot. If I've done it right. I've done something, no, no, it went. Right, oh no, use effect. Okay, so then it says it doesn't recognize use effect, so then we say, what's well, what's the deal with that? So we click on quick fix and it says, update the import statement from React to not just get use state, but to also get use effect. All right, so this is kind of our last little step here to get this working in the correct way. We say, save on that in our foodlist.tsx file. I think I deleted something I wasn't supposed to there. Let's let's make sure all our braces and stuff line up. So the opening brace for that there. Otherwise we're passing in an empty one. What is this brace? That brace I think is, oh, that's for the food list. Yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, we need to have a brace down here at the bottom, which we do. Let's save that. Okay, much better. So hopefully you didn't make that same mistake. But now I've got my food all lined, or my food, huh? my code all lined up. And if I reopen this, then save that. Oh, let's refresh. My processor's still spinning. So let's refresh this. All right, so now we're there. No errors. My fan just shut down. And if we go back to our .NET app, it's not making that call over and over and over again. And so what's happening here is it's, it's only going to do this fetch if it uh, needs to. And so it's going to go look and see, does it need to? And if it doesn't, so if it finds nothing, it'll just pass in an empty set. Otherwise, it'll go grab it. But we're not now doing it all the time. We only do it when we need to. And so that's the purpose of this use effect. Okay, whew, that was a lot. So like I told you, this is like the Boeing 777 Max. We've got a lot going on here and it's all being built out, but hopefully when we break it down, it's not too bad. So we went in, obviously spent a lot of time setting up the database in, in .NET, the back end. We got that all set up and then we built this controller. Now the controllers, the API, right, API controller named Marriott Food that is gonna allow us to go grab that data. We see that here. We've got this Marriott Food, that's what this is doing. 
is building for us this object. And we can obviously go in here and say, instead of the whole foods, we can say dot where something is true and then make that to the array, right? Just like we've done before, we could say go out and say where the x dot whatever is true and um, do that just like we would a regular query. So we can do all the same stuff we would do on this controller side, pulling the data, getting the data, arranging the data, doing the things we need to be able to pass down to that form. And, it, and the difference is it just comes out in the form of an API, uh, JSON object, instead of being, you know, just a, a iQueryable or something that comes down. So then on the React app side, we've gone in and built, we, we built a header first to go put that information in. And then we built, uh, our Marriott food or our food list table, but in order to get that, we had to go um, built a, a type here. This is a TypeScript file, ts. Notice this is dot, dot ts instead of tsx. We built a TypeScript file here that defines what a Marriott food object is going to look like. And so we've got that set. And then uh, once we have that set, we go into our food list and we say we're going to import that Marriott food object so that we know what it is. And then we can map it just like we've done the other mapping to go print out the information in the table. And so we can go print out that object for whatever we need. Um, and then to go pull the data, we went and set up this little, uh, this little fetch food data function that goes out and looks at that spot and goes and grabs the data that comes back into a JSON or the JSON data that comes back into this F and then we set the food data equal to F so that's being set there. And then we are using this effect to only fetch the food data if there's data out there that, that we need to fetch. Otherwise, this anonymous or this uh, blank array just says only run this one time, right? And, and, and uh, don't go do any of that other stuff, right? Leave it, leave it blank. And then we had the last thing that we just talked about at the end there was going and setting up the cores from a security perspective to allow it to grab data as long as it was coming from an origin of 3000. And so again, a lot of moving parts, but pretty cool that we can set this up and now we can go in and continue to build out our app to have it do whatever we want it to do like we would on a regular website. But now it's using React on the front end and .NET on the back end. Hopefully you're enjoying this stuff. It's interesting, it's complicated, there's a lot to it. But of course, like anything else, as you do it more and more, you get used to it and you, get, you become from more comfortable with it and more familiar with it and it's easier. And so just take some practice. Practice makes perfect, right? Spencer out.